Now, let's go to vector multiplications. As I said, there are three. We have the scalar multiplication, which is, which is very simple. The dot product, or we call that one a scalar product. And the last one is the cross product. For scalar multiplication, multiplication of a vector by a positive scalar A. A is just a number. It is just a scalar quantity. Multiplies the magnitude, but leaves the direction unchanged. So if A is negative, then the, the direction is reverse. Scalar multiplication is distributive. It means that, that if we have the scalar A multiplied by the vector sum A plus B, then you, you will just have to distribute this number or this scalar quantity A. So say for example, if I have this, A is 4, I had 8J hat, B is 3 plus 7. Then 3 times A is just equal to this. Just distribute the number A. So we have 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 8 is 24 J hat. Another example is if we have 4 times the vector sum A plus B, we will have this. Uh, distribute this 4. Okay. Distribute that 4. You will get this 28 I hat plus 60 liters J hat. So that's scalar multiplication. Next is we will go to that product. So consider these two vectors A and B. Okay, by the way, uh, I use the bold letter for, for vector here. Okay, so I use the bold letter for vectors. So I have two vectors, vector A and vector B. And the angle between these two vectors is equal to theta. Now, the dot product is defined by this equation. The notation for dot product is we have the center dot here. So we have a vector a dot vector b is equal to the magnitude of a times the vector b so vector a times vector b times the cosine theta where theta is the angle between vector a and vector b so if i use bold letters you can also express that product in terms of this one the bold letter a means vector a the bold letter b means vector b the uh, a and b are the magnitude okay this one is the magnitude of A, this one is the magnitude of B times cosine theta. So you can write. So some properties of a dot product is we have this. First is a dot product is commutative. It means that if you take the dot product A and B, it is just equal to the dot product of B and A. So we have A dot B is equal to B dot A. So that product is commutative and it is also distributive. Distributive. So we have a dot b plus c is equal to a dot b plus a dot c. So using that product, we will prove the expression of the cosine law. The law of cosine states that the length here c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So using that product, we can actually prove this one. Using polygon method, you can express A, B, C in terms of this equation. Using polygon, it says that the vector sum A plus C is just equal to your vector B. So we have vector B is equal to A plus C. Rewriting this equation, you will get C transpose the, the A to the other side. C is equal to B minus A. Now, calculating the dot product of C with itself. So we have to calculate C dot C. And C dot C is just equal to B minus A dot B minus A. And take note, a dot product is distributive. So you can distribute this one. So there are three uh, or four terms here. We have B dot B. Okay. So we have B dot B. That, then minus B dot A minus a dot b and then plus minus minus is plus and we have plus a dot a okay and using 
the definition of beta product c that c is just equal to the magnitude of c times the magnitude of c cosine of zero the angle between c and c is zero so therefore we have this by definition of beta product t t cosine of zero is which is equal to one so you can express c that c as c square we'll see here this c is the magnitude of rc it's the length of this arrow okay it is the length of this arrow so c dot c can be expressed in terms of c square b dot d can be expressed in terms of b square in terms of its magnitude quantity square a dot a is also a square and then take note that product is commutative so it means that b dot a is just equal to a dot b and a dot b is defined as a b cosine theta so therefore, there are two AB cosine theta. This one, this is AB cosine theta. This is also AB cosine theta. Add them, you will get minus two AB cosine theta. So we have, so therefore, this using a dot product, we have this. This one is C square. It is equal to A square. It is equal to A square plus B square minus there are two AB cosine theta, so we have minus two AB cosine theta. So therefore, this is the law of cosine, and we prove it using a dot product. Notice when theta is 90, then the triangle becomes a right triangle, and this will vanish, and you will get the Pythagorean theorem: c square is equal to a square plus b square, because cosine 90 is equal to zero. So this will become zero. Okay, so that's the law of cosine. Next, another one is if we consider two vectors in component form, in say in three dimension, you can write vector A as this and you can write vector B as that. Then A dot B is just equal to AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ. Take note, these are just numbers. So therefore, A dot B, the resulting uh, the resulting value of our a dot b is just a scalar num a scalar quantity. So we have that's that is why that product is also called a scalar product because if you take the that product of two vectors, you will get a scalar quantity. So these are just numbers. These are just the scalar quantities. Still. So there is no direction. There is no i hat, j hat, and k hat. So a dot b is equal to a b cosine theta, or it is equal to in terms of its components, it is equal to a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z. We take note that the, by definition a b cos a dot b is equal to a b cosine theta, and i hat that i hat. If you if you take that product of i hat and i hat or j hat and j hat k hat and k hat that is equal to one. Why? It's because is from the definition of a dot product so we have if we have i dot i it means that it is equal to the magnitude of i times the magnitude of i which is equal to one times cosine of zero because the angle of between i hat and i hat is is equal to zero so and cosine zero is equal to one so therefore i dot i hat is equal to one j hat dot j hat is equal to one and k hat dot k hat is also equal to one and I hat that j hat, j hat that k hat, k hat that i hat is equal to zero. Since i hat and j hat are perpendicular to each other, and take note the angle between these two is 90, and if you take the cosine of 90, cosine of 90 is equal to zero. So therefore, the dot product of any perpendicular vector, take note i hat, j hat, k hat are perpendicular to each other. The dot product of any perpendicular vectors is equal to zero because the angle between them is 90 degrees and cosine 90 is equal to zero say for example if i have two vectors vector a and vector b find a dot b a dot b is just you just have to multiply all the x component plus all the y component and all the z component you have this say a dot b is equal to 4 times 3 the x components are 4 and 3 so we have 4 times 3 the y component is 8 and 7 so we have 8 and 7 the z component is minus 13 and 
9. So we have minus 39 9. So A dot B is equal to minus 49 meter square. How about B dot A? If you multiply B dot A, so we have 3 times 4 plus 7 times 8 plus 9 times negative 13, you will also get minus 49 meter square. So we prove that that product is commutative. Means that A dot B is just equal to B dot A. So let's now go to our last topic, cross product, or we call this one as vector product. So consider two vectors A and B and makes an angle. Uh, the angle between A and B is theta. Cross product is defined as this A cross B. The notation for cross product is this x or times. It is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B sine of theta n hat, where n hat is a unit vector it can be i hat j hat or k hat we have to take note that a cross product is a vector quantity so the resulting product of these two is a vector uh, is a vector so therefore there is this direction of your your vector n hat it, again it can be i hat j hat or k hat how to get the direction we can use unit vectors or the right hand rule in performing a cross product. Take note the a b sine theta is just the magnitude and the direction is we have this n hat. Some properties of pro cross product we have first is it is distributive so we can distribute the a. Second is we have a cross product is anti-commutative it means that if we cross B and A, it is equal to the negative of A cross B. Unlike that product, that product is commutative, but cross product is anti-commutative. It is not commutative. And also, if two vectors are parallel, then their cross product is equal to zero. So say A cross A, it is equal to zero. B cross B is also equal to zero. Now, Using the definition of a cross product, we can actually get these six um, relationships between i hat, j hat, and k hat. Say, for example, if I cross a, i hat and j hat, your answer is k hat, positive k hat. If you cross j cross k, your answer is i hat. If you cross k cross i, your, your answer is j hat. Using right-hand rule, you can prove that this is correct. And take note. One property of a cross product is it is anti-commutative. So meaning if you reverse this one, we have j cross i. It means that this is equal to minus k hat. k cross j is minus i hat. i cross k is minus j hat. Or you can use this diagram here. See, if the direction of your cross is clockwise, say for example, if you cross i hat, then cross it with j hat, your answer is positive k hat. If your direction is counterclockwise. If, say, for example, is J hat, cross it with I hat, you will get the negative K hat. Same with this one. J hat cross K hat is positive I hat. K hat cross J hat is negative I hat. K hat cross I hat is positive J hat. I hat cross K hat is negative J hat. Now, in terms of its components, what is the cross cross product of two vectors? So for, for example, we have A is equal to this, B is equal to this one. Then A cross B is equal to, you can express A cross B as the determinants of this matrix. Where, if you simplify this one, getting the determinants of that, you will get this. Okay, you will get this expression. So this is a one technique to, to solve the cross product is we have first is copy the, the matrix and then copy the first two columns, this one, copy the first two columns and using basket method, you will get this AYBZ, which is this one, AYBZ minus is the by that is in your i hat okay using basket method to solve for the determinants and to solve for the cross product of a and b a and b we have this a y b z minus a z b y i hat next for the y component we have 
AZBX, AZBX minus AXBZ. And the last one for Y, com uh, for Z component, we have AXBY minus AYBX. Okay, yeah. And this is the cross product of two vectors. Say, for example, if I have two vectors again, A and B, we have this. Find A cross B. First is you have to copy the components. For example, for A, vector A, the components are 4, 8, and minus 13. Put it in the second row. The first row is your unit vectors, A, I hat, J hat, and K hat. Second row is the components of your A. And the third row is the components of your B. We have 3, 7, and 9. Using basket method, you will get this. We have 8 times 9. We have 8 times 9. Then, minus, minus 13 times 7. Next, is for J hat, we have minus 13 times 3, minus 9 times 4. For K hat, we have 4 times 7, minus 8 times 3 meters square K hat. So therefore, simplifying this term, you will get A cross B equal to this expression, 163 I hat minus 75 meters J hat plus 4 meters square K hat. And this is now your A cross B. It is a vector quantity. The cross product is a vector quantity. So that's the end of our lecture on vector analysis. Thank you for listening and God bless.